everybody. Thank you for joining our Adventures in Commercialization. This week, we have Juan Arango, Executive Director with uh, Rockies Region for Caretsu Forum, um, one of the largest angel investment networks in the world. Hi, Juan. Hey, Zoe. How are you? So good to see you again. It's been yeah. a while. <laughs> it has. Um, let us know a little bit about what, what's, what you guys have been up to lately with the angel investment world. Yeah, okay. Uh, for those uh, that don't know us, Caretsu Forum is an angel investor network. We have 65 chapters all over the world, over 3,500 accredited investors that are angel investors and are, are members. Uh, my region, the Pacific Northwest and Rockies, we have 390 investors. Last year, well, 2020, we're going to end up 2021, we're going to end up with more than $60 million in investment into uh, 78 companies. And we've been rocking and rolling during COVID, open for business, funding, fantastic companies left and right. Lovely. That's some amazing numbers. I love to hear it and that we're funding the future here. Um, what exactly does... Uh, account for an accredited investor? What, what it is an accredited investor? Okay, so um, as per the SEC, only accredited investors are able to invest in startups and are able to invest in certain, uh, in certain real, estate, uh, real estate funds and real estate deals. An accredited investor is a person that earns more than $200,000 a year or more than $300,000 a year uh, with uh, his or her spouse, has been doing so for the past two years, or uh, has over a million dollars in net worth without including their primary home. Uh, these people are allowed to make uh, angel investments. And so what kind of things do you look for in a company when they're, when they're coming for angel investments? Um, you know, what's the, what's the benefits between being with angels versus, you know, crowdfunding? In our last show, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, GoFundMe and some of these awesome resources that are out there um, for, you know, young entrepreneurs. But, but what, what kind of like gets them ready for an angel investment? Okay. Um, well, first off, there are, are let's say there are two. I'd say there are two types of companies. There's lifestyle companies. You know, your 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 bowling alley, your corner store, your movie theater, your you know all these things that are heavy, like in brick and mortar, and do not do not scale commercially without the the additional assets. And then there's tech companies, you know, like the ones you guys see in Shark Tank and all these, all this buzz about unicorns and all this stuff. Those are the companies that we, that we invest in. Now, benefits, I would say it's more about what stage your company is at. You know, typically you start out with an idea and then you go to a prototype. Typically you're bootlegging it, how we call it. You're, you're you know, you're spending your own money to fund the company, then you get to, after prototype stage, you get to a minimum viable product, which is something that, com that, that people will, will actually buy. Typically that phase, you have uh, what we call FFFs funding you, friends, family, and, and foolish people that kind of believe in you in the beginning. It's a little funny. I, I don't mean to be to be mean, but that's you know that's what they're called in in the industry. Um, once you're ready to commercialize, uh, you can approach angel investors that do early stage, or you can do some venture capital firms that do early stage. There's a lot of them, but here's the trick. Here's the trick. If you don't have sales, you will be less attractive because there's a lot of risk in commercializing, you know, whatever it is that your idea, you know, or, or your company produces. So the more revenue you have, the more appealing you are to investors. Our group particularly invests in companies that uh, have north of $500,000 in revenue. And I would say that's a sweet spot. 
any angel group will definitely talk to you and start due diligence on you if you if you if you go above that hurdle. Awesome. Thank you. That's great information. When would you kind of advise somebody to sign, for example, an NDA if they were going to come into um, an angel group like this? Um, you mentioned, you know, um, you know, minimum viable product time. Is that because these some of these entrepreneurs are coming in um, very early stage? So when when do you recommend something like a piece of paper like that? Okay, so um, that's a really interesting question. When you have this hot new idea and um, you are certain that you're going to revolutionize the world and you know, you're going to become a billion dollar company and all this stuff, you tend to want to protect whatever it is that you have, right? Um, well, you protect it, honestly, through, um, you know, through, through an IP attorney, somebody that does intellectual property. Right. Um, now, if you're going to have angel investors look at your company and look at your stuff, not many will sign an NDA. Angel investors, especially now in this day and age, they get bombarded with with ideas every single time. Entrepreneurs that are going to change the world. 10, 20, 30, 50, 200 offers a month. Imagine signing NDAs for every single thing. It's impractical. It's impossible. Nobody's going to do it. So instead of having people sign NDAs, the strategy is to share enough information that, you know, that people understand what you're doing without revealing your secrets. So any material that you can share that is, that, that is you know, safe and sanitized enough, should be better than, than having people sign NDAs because they just won't talk to you. Awesome, interesting. And what, you know, what kind of advice would you give for new companies? If a company was gonna come to you, you mentioned you know, having $500,000 in revenue. Um, are there other criteria that you look at for a company coming in? Um, yeah, we look for, for many, for many, or not many, you know, several uh, different things. I do want to take a, a little step back, though, and give um, you know a really, in, in my worldview, a really good recommendation to everybody that's out there that's starting a company that's looking for funding. I would say the best thing you can do, with you know, without any type of comparison, is learn how to sell. Learn how to sell. You have to be an expert salesman to be um, a startup CEO. You're the person that you know that makes you know that that makes it rain. You're the person that brings in the big sales. You're the person that brings in investors. So you really need to learn how to sell. There are many outfits out there that'll make you a professional salesman. That would be the first thing. Because think of it this way. If any human being cuts a hundred thousand dollar check, in return they're going to get a bunch of something. They're going to get a bunch of widgets, a bunch of service, something they can take home. They're going to get a bunch of something. So you're you're exchanging money for something tangible or intangible, but you know that you can actually, you know that actually exists. With a startup, a startup CEO is trying to convince somebody to give him or her a $100,000 check for a piece of paper that looks a lot like this piece of paper, except that with a signature on it, you know, a contract and a promise of execution. So it's a heck of a hat trick to convince somebody to give you a check for, uh, you know what, I can do this and I can give you money back. So become an expert salesman. If you are not the expert salesman, partner with one, okay? And to answer the question fully, what else do we look for? We look for experience talking to angel investors, experience negotiating. When you, know, when you talk to individual angels or with accredited individuals that just like you a lot or your family members, um, 
you need to start developing skills, Deve developing, you know, understanding the jargon, um, learning how to convince people before you come to an angel group. An angel investor has, has typically, you know, invested and lost more money than many people will make in a year or in five years or in 10 years. So they can size you up like instantly first five seconds they know if this is your first if this is your first rodeo so you don't want it to look like your first rodeo if it is your first rodeo get a coo or get a founding partner that has been there and done that because you know honestly why would i give somebody who 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 is doing this for the first time ever, why would I give them my money? Does that make sense? Yes, 100%. Okay. Um, so what would you say, you know, what, what kind of things do these companies have to, to give up for these angel investors? So you said it mentioned a promise, a piece of paper. Um, is there an expected return? Do these, these angel investors get equity in the company or, or how does that work? Okay, yeah, so angel investors, angel investors they are investors like you know investors in real estate investors in you know in the public markets investors in gold and whatever they put money into assets because they want a healthy return they want a return a return on their investment um this can you know this means they're going to buy some kind of security from you whether it's stock or Sometimes what they do is, um, you know, is they, they lend you money on what they call convertible notes, which is you're paying them interest. And at a certain point, this, uh, this loan becomes equity and they end up owning part of your company. For angel investors, you know, when, when we're talking about initial commercialization, your first 500,000, your first 2 million bucks, they expect to receive anywhere from 15 to 20% of what your company is worth. So that's what they expect. And in terms of return, they expect that in the next five to seven years, you're gonna give them back five to 10 times their money. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And, and what is, what do you think the success rate of some of these companies are? Because they are startups, um, they, ha they do have yeah. revenue. But how how successful do you think these companies are? So, companies they go through a through a life cycle, just like technology goes through a, a life cycle. You know, the Betamax was 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 really big in the '80s, and then you know Betamaxes don't exist anymore. And the same thing with everything, like the, your flip phone, and you know your your iPad. iPads are kind of you know last generation you know they don't exist anymore they're, they're not really all that useful um <clears throat> so according to studies according to robert wiltbank uh who has many many articles on investor angel investor returns um he says that out of uh 20 companies two companies will produce 10 to 20 times what you invested in them um about five companies will produce close to five uh, close to five times uh that makes it nine about you know and the rest will produce zero to one zero to one times what you what you put into them uh most companies you know they start and uh, eventually they grow a little bit, they stall, they become what we call zombies. And then they either, you know, they, they pitter out or, you know, they just keep, keep coasting. I'd say, yeah, five to 10% actually make it and, and give some kind of return. And are these companies um, looking to, you know, finish out a life cycle or, or are they looking for exits? Or are these angel investors um, curious about, you know, this, this five to seven year return? 
Okay, that is a, a really interesting, that's a really interesting question. So my experience is that um, angel investors, they, they're going to tell you, you know what, I want to invest in companies that have a, a really good team. And they say team, team, team. Uh, team, team, team means that people can execute and they can grow their companies, right? They can grow their companies. Once, you know, as a CEO, you are at $5 million in revenue. My question is, will you want to sell or, you know, and give your angels return or will you want to try to hit 10 million? And when you hit 10 million, here's my question again, are you going to sell? Are you going to try to hit uh, 50 million? And here's my question again, when you hit 50 million, you're going to want to sell and give investors back their money, or you want to hit, you know, 300 million and so on and so on and so on. There's a certain point, you know, when angels will not be able to tell you what to do and you're on your own, but what really needs to happen and what makes you know, angel investment uh, something viable and something sustainable is if you actually stop at $20 million in sales, give your investors back their money so they can invest in other people just as good as you are that have dreams just as good as yours. You know, you take your 10 million bucks you know, and take a year sabbatical, then come back again with your next idea, which will probably produce twice as much in half the time. And then you become a serial entrepreneur. That's what, that's what we want to accomplish. But that is rare. That is rare. Entrepreneurs do not want to exit. Angel investors don't know how to force or to motivate entrepreneurs to exit and give them their money back. Interesting. So you mentioned team, 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 um, and, you know, having enough revenue, but what other things would you like to see in a pitch deck from, from an entrepreneur? Okay. Um, so other things, uh, for example, well, he has to be a good leader. He or she has to be a good leader, a good communicator. Um, an angel investor has to be able to, to work you know, comfortably with the, with the entrepreneur. Imagine you having a relationship, uh, you know, with somebody for five to seven years, right? You guys are going to work together. You better get along. Some people say it's, it's, you know, an angel investment relationship with an between an entrepreneur and an investor lasts twice as long as a marriage with half the love. <laughs> so you better, you better know. Yeah, you better, you better be able to, to work with your, with your investors. And yeah. Um, you mentioned contact information, making sure that that's on their pitch deck. You, you see yeah, it. <laughs> that's interesting. So um, I am, I am passionate about uh, tactics and strategies on how to raise money from angel investors. As a matter of fact, eventually I'll finish writing a book exactly on that, like tactical funding of startups or how to, how to get money from angel investors. And what, what brought it all on is a personal pet peeve. Imagine that I'm an investor and I receive an email from somebody or a pitch deck and I'm thinking about it. I get up in the morning. I say, you know what? I really, I really like this company. Maybe I want to put $50,000 into it. And then I go to the email, there's no phone number. And I go to the pitch deck and there's no phone number. There's nowhere to reach the, the person. That is incredibly frustrating. To me, it screams amateur. You know, is this really your first time? Are you really serious about investing? You know, about talking to angels? You, you, you can't even put your contact information on your pitch deck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> now, if I'm an investor and I have another five deals just as good as yours, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, you know what? I'll send them an email, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to move on and talk to my next, my next potential investment. Right. 
I mm-hmm. definitely just like when people don't have their contact information in there, even in their email, like the in their email. Email. it's crazy. <laughs> you got to scroll down like 50 emails to see what the heck his number is. And you need them <laughs> because you want to introduce them to, to 50 angel investors, you know, next week and you can't find it. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, so I collect these, I collect <laughs> these tactics and strategies. I'm up to, uh, I believe 89. Wow. And that is what I, I coach my entrepreneurs on, how to raise money from angels. Awesome. Would you recommend, I used, you mentioned expert sales salesmen or saleswomen that, uh, would you recommend that a CEO find somebody in order to present their company to angels, maybe that has done it before, or, or would you say the CEO is the person that needs to be doing that? Um, I would say angels in general prefer the CEO because the CEO is the, is the front person, the person they talk to, the person that clients talk to, that other you know um, distribution channels or other partners talk to. So definitely develop your commercial ability. If it's not natural to you, maybe your position is CTO, you know, chief technical officer or um, chief operating officer. Right, but maybe not CEO. CEO is the sales guy, is the consummate, complicated sales guy. Okay, interesting. And Karetsu Forum, do they do they invest? You mentioned real estate. You mentioned some like how does it differ from say Shark Tank and and what you guys invest in in your? Okay, we're we're less silly than Shark Tank. <laughs> and instead of having five, you know, seasoned investors. Type A personalities with uh, with a with a serious serious investment thesis. We have three hundred and ninety three. Wow. You know that's the that's the that's the big difference between us and and Shark Tank. But uh, basically, we're a pretty friendly group. We're a pretty friendly group. We we welcome every type of of investment from real estate to you know to rocket to solid rocket fuel. You know, to everything. I I joke a little bit and uh, I tell my entrepreneurs and my investors, you know, I will take a look at anything that sells 500 grand or more. You know, if you figured out how to sell nail clippings and you have (laughs) 500 grand in revenue, I am instantly curious because I have no idea what that business model is like. (laughs) I'm curious, and I'm sure my investors will be curious. Now, is there a business model and there's monetization and, and is, is there an exit there? I don't know. We'll, we'll check it out. <laughs> but as long as you have 500, anything, life science, pharma, material I, science, anything you want. I used to joke with Karetsu Forum that we did everything from kitty litter to cancer research, which I think we literally did. We did. We do. Research. Yeah, no. kitty litter. Kitty litter, no joke. Everything, you know, the, these automatic feeding devices for doggies. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, Love it. to everything, to, to machines that extract ozone, you know, that extract ozone and produce fuel you know, awesome. out, of, out, of, out of thin air. Yeah, we do all that. Cool. Well, we're almost out of time here. If you had one last piece of advice for young entrepreneurs, what would you give them, Juan? Okay. Now, here's the deal. If you are a young entrepreneur and this is your first time, imagine yourself being an artist. You're an artist. You're creating a work of art. Now, this work of art is going to, you know, you're going to figure it out eventually. And you're going to produce something that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, Now, as an angel investor, who wants to invest in works of art? In somebody that's just figuring things out. Wouldn't you rather invest in somebody that has done this five or six times? And instead of an art project, starts looking like an automated you know, an automated machine that produces startups and startups and startups and startups every five years? I would say the latter instead of the former. So if you are in this first time gig, partner up. 
partner up hard with people that have done this many times because you can't look like an art project. You gotta look as pro as pro comes for people to give you a hundred grand for a promise. That would be my, my biggest advice. Awesome. Partner up and look pro. I think that's great. And I think Karetsu Forum definitely brings that sense of networking um, place to find people who have done this before. I know that a lot of the members are serial entrepreneurs themselves, which is, which is just amazing. That's how they got to be those accredited investors that they are today. <laughs> that's right. Awesome, Juan. Well, thank you so much for joining our show of Adventures in Commercialization. This was super informative, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for being here. All right. Um, if anybody that's, um, that's uh, watching the show needs more information, my email is really easy. It's Juan, J-U-A-N, at Kretsu, just like you see right in the back of my, of my screen right here, kretsuforum.com. One at correctforum.com. And that's it. Lovely. Thank you so much.